Hi everybody and welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be going over escape rooms. So hopefully y'all are having a great week or weekend um, and you guys are keeping up with your summer reading and getting those prizes. <laughs> uh, so today uh, we're going to be going over different puzzle ideas for escape rooms. So if you're looking at maybe going to an escape room or creating one at home, what kind of puzzles you can make or expect when you go in. And this is just going to kind of give you all the tips and tricks as to, you know, the different kind of things that will go into the escape room. We're not, however, going to be focusing on how how to create an escape room story from A to Z. So we're just going to be looking at the puzzles. This video should be coming out as well with an interactive escape room form. Uh, this, this Escape the Woods uh, virtual escape room is a little bit different than your standardized escape rooms with all the puzzles and things like that. Um, this one more or less kind of tests your knowledge on if you were put into an enchanted forest where fairy tales were real. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, hopefully y'all like it. Uh, there was a lot of work that was put into it. <laughs> um, but try it out. I'll be posting a link to that form in this video posting, as well as there's going to be a separate posting for it that goes up on our Facebook page, too. So hopefully you guys can hop in on that and test it out and see what happens. Um, <laughs> so, and feedback is always welcome. So if you test it out, uh, leave your feedback in this video comment sections or anywhere on our Facebook page. <laughs> we'll, we'll see it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and start with... Um, the escape room puzzles so the first one we have here and i'm also going to post a link to this but i am getting these basically this layout of the puzzles that i want to go over from nowescape.com it's a blog and it's a uh, 101 pu best puzzle ideas for escape rooms so this this blog is more or less like um teaching you what puzzles to use if you're doing a DIY escape room or you're trying to create one from scratch. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just hop right in. Uh, the first one they have on there is hidden objects. Now this is a rather simple one. Uh, it's basically like you either hide something in the room, you hide it in something, um, it's basically what will typically be in there is a clue to something else. So let's say you find this object in the escape room. It's typically supposed to be paired or uh, it's supposed to be a lock or a key or something that goes into something else. It's not, it's typically not a standalone object. Um, the reason for this is because if you make it a standalone object or it is like the puzzle solving thing, you're going to run into the problem where the first thing people do when they get into an escape room is they look everywhere. Head to toe to ceiling, they look everywhere thinking that, you know, there's going to be the combinations hidden around the room. <laughs> when in reality, escape rooms are more or less built to test your mystery solving abilities and your critical thinking skills and things like that. So you're going to want to make, if you hide an object, you want it to be paired with something. So, and this is another thing that we'll talk about later, you can hide a black light somewhere and then have writing in the wall that only shows up when the black light is shined on it shown on it <laughs> um so that is one possibility um another possibility is you could hide um a key and it may not necessarily be a key to one of the five locks on the escape room box as is, but it can be like um, a key to a safe that holds another object or something like that. Um, 
So it's just really one of those things you don't you want to avoid trying to hide the actual code somewhere or hide the actual thing that's going to get them out. Um, because that's going to be an easy, <laughs> easy find for people. <laughs> um, so the next thing we're going to go over is lighting. Um, so the one thing about this blog, and you'll kind of see it when um, we kind of pass through them, but they do have some things listed on here where it's more or less like, a professional escape room type of thing um, but again you can pick and choose what you want to use out of here so it's not like the end-all be-all if you can't do it <laughs> um, so the next thing we're gonna go over to of course is lighting so you can make this now they get into some really heavy details here like placing a code on a spinner fan so that it can only be used reading a strobe light in the dark um, that requires a lot of maneuvering and a lot of trying to make sure you have everything placed just right on that fan. So, um, anyways, uh, lighting, so with spinner fans, things like that, you can also do it as to glow in the dark. So, again, if you don't have, like, black light stuff, um, you can make it to where it's, like, you hide a riddle somewhere in the room, and the riddle basically gives them the clue to turn out the lights. And then when they turn out the lights, they see the code wherever it may be. Uh, now for that, all you would really need is glow-in-the-dark paint, which you can buy at the dollar store. Um, so it's really nice. That's kind of like a really easy, cheap clue that you can do. Um, but it's still fun because then your kids, teens, whatever, they get to turn out the lights and freak out. <laughs> um, so there's things like that that you can do. You can also, um, one that I really like that they suggest here is do a three to four character sequence out of Christmas lights on the ceiling and then surround it with additional lights. Um, and basically when you shut off the additional lights, it only leaves the code up. So basically, they would have to decode it. Um, or another option that you could also do is with Christmas lights or another type of string lights, like maybe fairy lights. Um, I think fairy lights would be a really good idea for this one, where you do a Morse code pattern, and then your kid, uh, then they, then people kind of have to figure out the Morse code and things like that. And of course, you can leave sheets or like a book or things like that that are laying around the room that would actually have the the ability to decode it because I'm pretty sure not a lot of people know what Morse code is or <laughs> even how to decode it nowadays. Um, but uh, what you could do is with the fairy lights, you could string them up and then tape them tape like every other one or tape the ones uh, that help make the pattern so it when they're looking at them the only thing that's left up is the random string of lights uh, in that morse code pattern <clears throat> so the next thing that we're going to talk about okay here's an example of this one where it's more or less um like you may not be able to do it like a secret passage or a secret room. <laughs> uh, but also this could help with, um, especially with some of the younger kids or uh, people that don't have a lot of experience in escape rooms. The notice something obvious in the room is a really good tactic. Um, because, and again, it doesn't really have to be like an escape hatch or a secret room. It can be like footprints on the ground, or it can be, um, it really could be anything. It could be, uh, like articles that are taped to the wall type of situation. And then, um, really all you have to do is pick them up and read them to see if it really requires anything. In one escape room that I did, one of the first things that people kind of saw when they walked in was the, um, board there was a board that had 
everything like it had a map and then it had uh, some of the puzzle pieces on it and it had articles on it and basically what I did was I designed this teen escape room as a um, haunted amusement park so it was based on the old Astro World that was here in Houston and what I did was I got some real articles and then I got some articles that I made to fit into um, the puzzle and basically made it into like in a haunted amusement park. And so the articles were put on the wall as well as strings and things like that. So they could kind of connect the dots of uh, the Astro World Park. And it was one of those things where it was like, it's typically the first thing they go over and look at because it has the most things on it. And that's good because that draws their attention to those clues and those objects and things that need it. So when you build an escape room, you don't always want everything to be hidden. Because if your players can't find the things that they need to get out with, or they're having difficulty finding them, they're just going to kind of be like, well, this is pointless, and throw their hands up and walk away. Um, and we kind of talked about this one. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I kind of transitioned really quickly. But anyways, that concludes the find something obvious in the room. Uh, we're going to move into symbol situations with the key. Uh, now, this can be a variety of different things. Um, if you have a directional lock, like ones that have arrows up, down, side to side, and um, whatever else, you can use that. It's a really good lock to have, um, mainly because it it's one of those things you can use for a variety of different things. You can be talking about north, south, east, or west. You can be talking about you take five steps forward and five steps to the right and X marks the spot or whatever. And so it's a really good directional lock to have. And again, in the escape room that I talked about, one of the clues was they had to find the underlined words in the article, um, which typically led them to a specific point. And then they had to put those articles in chronological order, and then they would get the directional lock. Um, so when it comes to symbols and situations with the key, so what are we talking about if you don't have locks or you don't have all this fancy stuff? What you can do is go back to the original puzzle idea, things with like the Morse code. Again, you can give them something with hieroglyphics. You can make up your own pattern or your own designation, but be sure that there is some way for them to get a key in order for them to decode this because you can't expect your players to have all this knowledge on hand. Um, so with the pattern, just be sure they have a key somewhere. Now you don't have to make the key obvious. You can hide it, use the hide an object for that part. Hide it in a book, hide it behind the bookcase, hide it. So it's not like, oh, well, here's the key, here's the pattern. Okay, now I just need to decode this. It's either they notice the key or they notice the pattern first. And then, they're, then they have to put it together. Um, so another thing that they have something in here is called using something in an unusual way. Um, so like one of their ideas is dial, provide a dial phone that can be used as a calculator or vice versa. Now some of these things might become hard to come by. Like I'm not really sure where you would get that. <laughs> um, but like I said, there's a lot of things in here that you can take or leave or even modify so they kind of fit your need. Idea number 22 is a really good one. Uh, it's uh, provide a plastic card that players can slide between a door jam and a latch to open a locked door or to, or to a door with no handle. Um, so what I'm thinking is if you're trying to put an escape room together right now, is you're trying to do it at home. I think what a really good idea would be is to escape the house. <laughs> quote unquote. Um, 
So it's it, like something like that would be feasible. Now in a library setting, that's not so much going to be feasible. <laughs> so it really depends upon what you have to work with and where you're at. Uh, so uh, another one that they have on here that you can pretty much use anywhere is require players to use a heavy object in the room to apply weight to a platformer switch. Um, now for that, uh, I'm not sure how you would really apply that so much as um, uh, so much as having somebody in the room with them. So when we host these events at the library, we typically have a staff member inside of the escape room with them in order to make sure, one, for safety, and two, to kind of help with clues and hints and things like that. So uh, this could be something where when they do figure out what object to place the other object on, it's more or less you introducing the puzzle to it instead of having an actual uh, platform or switch like um because at that point you're then talking about like some indiana jones stuff going on <laughs> so uh that's really possible as well um but yeah just kind of take these things and change them into what you can work with so this is where i get a lot of my ideas from but of course not everything that they can do in a professional escape room or a house, let alone, we can do in a library. So I kind of have to take ideas from other people and change them into something that's adaptable and change them into something that will work at the library. <clears throat> so, of course, one of the more obvious ones is searching, searching for object or images. Like I kind of said, in my situation, they had a map of the Asher World Park and the articles. Basically, what they're saying here is this object or image could be like a book. It can be a map. It could be an old photo because I had several of those as well. Uh, but basically, and another thing that you can do is take like the old photos and label them in glow in the dark paint or label them in the black light ink on the back of them and then they could find the hidden object and then put the pictures together in order or whatever the order is for the code so the next one we're going to go ahead and go over is pattern identification. And again, a lot of this seems like repetition, but it's more or less like different ways in how you use the stuff. So what this is saying is basically give your players an opportunity to recognize and uh, combine related items to create messages or clues that aren't immediately ob obvious. So this can be done by providing a set of dots within which a shape or code can be found or so like those colorblind pictures that's what you can kind of think about but maybe have it be a little bit different or it's more or less like a collage with a hidden picture inside of it and then you also have give players a set of symbols that can be combined to create a word or a number that ties back into um glyphs, keys, things like that, and um, like hieroglyphics. So you also have the last one they recommend is attach items to a wire board and requires player that requires players to connect those to create a pattern. Uh, now, a really interesting idea, which I think would be amazing if you guys do it, and if you do, you should tag us on Instagram and show us your picture, is you can take a string of Christmas lights, cut them up, and what you can do, especially if you have like maybe copper wiring or some type of conductor, is you could make it to where um, 
you have a board and then you have it with all these Christmas lights on it that are connected to these conductors. And then uh, whatever the object is, like if it's placed on the right one, it can it would light up the thing. Or even if it's just like you have one itty bitty Christmas light hidden around the room and then you have a conductor running to it and running all the way to this random spot in the room that has like maybe a platform or it's something obvious that stands out and then once they find that object and put it on that pedestal or area it actually lights up that itty bitty light in the room that could possibly then lead them to another clue that would be really cool and i will probably use that in one of my escape rooms now <laughs> um so then, of course, you have riddles so you can get from anywhere. If you're not a riddle whiz kid, uh, you can find them literally anywhere online or in any riddle books at your HCPL library. <laughs> um, but then you also have cipher keys, so like the Da Vinci Code, things like that. Um, this kind of allows them, this is more of like an encrypted message. So then you get into <laughs> more critical thinking and logic skills. So this would be more for the older teens and adults and things like that to really get into. Um, but basically what it does is it's supposed to be, instead of just like matching everything together, it's more or less like you're trying to get the code out of it and then figure it out type of situation. So these can actually be pretty confusing. I mean, they're still pretty confusing for me, but I mean, hey. Um, another one is sound. So I really like this one. And again, I used this one in one of my escape rooms. Now this one, when I did sound, I did it as kind of a bonus round because not a lot of people pay attention to it. So it was, and I was designing a room for teens, and um, it was during a large event, so it was going to get loud and things like that, so I didn't want it to play a dominant part in my escape room. But we did throw it in there as kind of like a bonus thing, so like if they figured it out, then they would uh, be able to get an extra minute or a minute taken off of their time, things like that. So with uh, the sound you can basically play like you want to give them a repeating code you don't want it to be too long you don't want it to be ambient noise but like again you can use morse code so like the tapping um you could use a sequence of sounds animal noises what i did was i actually used a clip of a song now this song uh was this whole escape room was Halloween themed. So the song was the, from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And there's a part in the song that says, I am the creature hiding under your bed. Um, and with that, we actually had like a little couch sofa area and we had a key kind of taped right underneath that. So if they were listening to the song and it was just a clip it was like a 15 to 30 second clip of that that song. So it wasn't like too obvious which phrase they needed to pick out. But it wasn't the whole song on repeat. It was just that 30 seconds um, or that 15 seconds where it was like, I am the creature hiding under your bed. And so maybe if they kind of looked under the sofa, they would be able to find that key and then get that bonus thing. Uh but yeah, so there's different things you can do. You can do cassette tapes, if you still have those. <laughs> uh, you can use uh, other different kind of codes. Just get creative with the sound part of it. And again, this this may be something that you do um, depending upon who you are. Uh, I know from my, from my experience, uh, I noticed a lot of teens kind of recognized the sound, and then they wrote it off. There were maybe one or two that were like, hold on, 
this is actually just playing the same thing over and over. So that may be something to do. Mirrors, this comes into, uh, again, kind of like hidden messages and things like that. Something that you could do is um, you could have something like this printed out and written up or written up. And you could have a mirror in the room that literally just has windows for each letter or word that needs to be highlighted to make a code. Um, so what I, I like to use a combination of things because typically just holding that up to a mirror and then if, if you were just to be like, oh, here's this thing, I just need to put it in a mirror and then hold it up to a mirror and have the code, then it's not much fun. Whereas if you're now giving them, okay, I'm looking at this in the mirror, but I can see this needs to be lined up and then write down whatever is lined up for the code and then break the code, it makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, but yeah, you can write hidden messages. Uh, it looks like on here they did a riddle or things like that um, to just kind of give them ideas and to kind of, and sometimes you can throw a red herring in there. Uh, I would say be careful with how many puzzles or clues or things like that you want to throw into the escape room because how many you have could depend on whether or not um how long how long your escape room is actually going to last uh the one that i built was built to last for 15 minute increments and we were trying to get people in and out so it's like if you didn't solve it in that 15 minutes you lost um a lot of escape rooms typically do have a time frame in which you need to actually solve <laughs> the room but if you're doing this from home and you don't really have a time constraint or things like that that's fine um but i would say just be careful with how many puzzles and clues and things like that you throw into it because it could eat up a lot of time because one thing you will be amazed by is how much time is eaten up just by people looking at random stuff in the room that has nothing to do with the puzzle at all like oh what's this light bulb <laughs> like why is it loose it's like that's just loose because we haven't tightened it in five years or something, you know? It's just kind of one of those things you want to be mindful of that experience. And even if you are doing it from home, I would say you probably want to want to go over like 30 minutes at most. Um, because at that point, people start losing interest and things like that. Um, you also want to keep in mind how many people are you doing this with? So if you're doing it with like five kids, are you doing it with four? Are you doing it with just the one? Then it it varies to how much you can put in there. But I would recommend go ahead and taking a look at this site. They have so many other ideas on here. Now, some of them you may not be able to do um, given your location. But there are a lot of things on here that you can use, like smell, taste, sense of sound, things like that that don't take up a lot of time, don't take up a lot of um, energy or things like that. So I would say just really sit down, take a look at the site, and kind of modify what's what you like on here to fit what you need. Like I was saying, I typically have to do that all the time because a lot of the things I want to do for an escape room, I can't do in a library setting. So I have to modify them to make them doable in a library setting. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Kind of, there's a lot to consider when you build an escape room. Um, if you guys want to try out a different type of escape room, we have our virtual one going up. So don't be afraid to check that out. Uh, now, there are, since it's a virtual escape room, what wound up happening is there are ways you can lose <laughs> it is not a one set path <laughs> so you actually have to well 
it, it is and it isn't. So it's a one set path and like you have to find the right path to get to the answer, but there's multiple ways to get there. But there are also multiple ways that you don't get there. <laughs> so if you don't get it right the first time, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, it doesn't mean that it's not there, it just means that you need to find it. Um, so yeah, I would go ahead, take a look at that. Uh, our virtual escape room is a bit more testing your knowledge on classical fairy tales and folklore, kind of fitting with our theme for summer reading. Uh, but that's about all I had for you guys today. Go out there, build some escape rooms. <laughs> uh, they're a lot of fun, and you can do these at home, like this picture shows. Even if you have, like, a study or something like that, it'd be a really good place to do it. Um, but even if you're not doing it in a big fancy house, you can always do it in maybe, like, a studio apartment where it's more or less like a box that you're trying to unlock. So, modify it. There is no limit to what, how, where or how you can do this. Um, and again, use if you're working with limited space, use those things that don't take up a lot. Make it a lockbox that they have to try and figure out. And the locks don't even have to be real. <laughs> you could just make them out of paper or something and just be like, oh yeah, you got this one, or things like that. I mean... <laughs> It's going to be fun no matter what you do. Um, you just got to make the puzzles interesting and engaging. Uh, but yeah, that's all I had today. So I will see you all next time. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Go check out our escape room. Please, please, please. <laughs> uh, and leave some feedback for us. And we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody.